Hank was the first coach that understood that football was entertainment as well as a sport. And that made him different. In the history of NFL films, there are four coaches that really um, supported us and opened up the playing field for NFL films. First was Lombardi, who understood the, the historical nature and, and the fact, the value of us filming the games and, and him wearing a mic. Sid Gilman was great. His uh, family ran a movie theater. So he was always interested in how we made the films. George Allen, another person who opened up the, his, his locker room to us, and he was so paranoid about the media. When other coaches saw George Allen let the NFL films into the locker room and in the meeting rooms, they said, geez, if he lets NFL films and we can trust them. And of course, the other coach was Hank Stram. And it was because Hank understood that he was also a performer as well as a coach. And I think the thing with Hank is that Hank had his own vocabulary. And if you were around Hank long enough, you understood, like he always referred to his players as rats. Hey, rats. And um, when we first heard that, we thought that was derogatory, but it wasn't. I mean, it was a term of endearment. I don't think there's any explanation of them. I, I, I don't really know where they came from or how um, that um, verbiage became part of who he was, but um, he, he called all of us rats. Hey, come on, rats. Humphead, smush. My father was big smush, and I was little smush. We had a little uh, dachshund. Um, and his name was Smush. Uh, the officials were sausage stuffers or pus bellies. Every official, hey, look at this pus belly. has a bad call, you pus belly. You guys are a bunch of sausage stuffers. So Hank had this whole vocabulary. He loved using words that really didn't make any sense. They made sense to him, but they didn't make any sense to anybody else. But when we mic'd mic him for the Super Bowl, um, that was Super Bowl IV. There is a fallacy that Super Bowl III made the Super Bowl. It didn't. To the vast majority of the public, they felt that the Jets' victory was a fluke. And that was mirrored the next year when the Chiefs played the Vikings. The Vikings were 13-point favorites. So there wasn't parity in the public's mind after Super Bowl III. But Super Bowl IV, and I had maintained this for, for years, Super Bowl IV and the Kansas City Chiefs made the Super Bowl Super. When the Chiefs made the Super Bowl, we knew right away we got to get, get uh, Hank to wear a mic. Hank uh, had the whole top half of the Sinesta Hotel. Hank's sitting there, he's watching a college game, and my dad and I go up there, and my dad says, we'd love to mic you for the Super Bowl. And Hank, who often referred to himself in the third person, you know, the mentor, and he says, well, uh, uh, Smush, uh, uh, the mentor will agree to wear a, a, a microphone for the Super Bowl, but uh, some coin of the realm is going to have to change hands. And uh, my father looked at me and I, what the hell, what, a coin of the realm, what does that mean? And Hank goes, some dead, dead president, Smush something I can fold up and put in my pocket. We didn't expect that. And uh, my dad says, oh, well, uh, Hank, uh, have $250? And Hank says, that won't even pay for the mentor's dry cleaning bills. So we got up to $500 and Hank agreed to wear the mic. We picked Hank because as filmmakers, we knew that win or lose, that he was going to be great. How in the world can all six of you miss a play like that? All six of you miss a play. Watch Johnny Robinson. Make sure you watch Johnny. Make sure he's all right back there. And it was there, wasn't it, boys? It was, it was there, wasn't it? My two older brothers got to go to the first Super Bowl. So um, we all asked, you know, who do we get to go? Do I get to go? And, and he said, absolutely not. He said, this is too big a game, and I'm not taking any of the kids. And so I was a little disappointed that I wasn't going to be able to go. So I go to school uh, that morning, the day that they were going to leave, and um, I was in the cafeteria at Briarwood School. And, um, My dad walked in with my suitcase and he said, uh, come on, you're going with me. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Leonard. He can't cover that thing, Lenny. Throw it any time. I'd pitch on the outside. That's a good time to throw it right there, you see. They put on such an ass whipping on the Vikings 
that people then realize there is parity. That was, it was 23 to seven, but the Chiefs outfought them, outfought them, out hit them, and the Vikings came into that game. You know, the purple people leaders, Jim Marshall, Carl Eller, Joe Cap, real physical team, and the Chiefs just pounded them. I mean, just whipped them, mentally and physically. Okay, let's, let's do a go. job. Hold up, hold hey, these guys can't move the ball the against us. Let's do the job on it, babies. Come on. Watch the play action pass. Play action pass. And make sure you keep them in that pocket. They didn't know where to go. Yeah, because Sulky was running around there like it was a Chinese fire drill. 65 toss power trap. That might pop wide open, Rats. Running play coming to Garrett on a top. Touchdown. Garrett scores the ball. Was it there, boys? Was that there, Rats? Nice going, baby. Yeah! The mentor. 65 toss power trap. Yeah! We were a family that, that um, showed our emotions towards each other. So my opportunity after a couple of the touchdowns, the one Otis made and then um, the um, 65 toss power trap that Mike scored, I went after my father and I, and I gave him a kiss. I kissed him both times. Now, obviously when you watch the film, um, I think he is totally, totally oblivious to, I mean, you know, it could have been Buck Buchanan kissing him, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have known. <laughs> I was shooting the camera across the field, and if you want, look at, at it closely, when Hank starts... Make sure you mark it right. Oh, you lost your place. Measure it, take the chains out there. Oh, they didn't make it. My God, they made that by an inch. He, he definitely gave an extra foot. Bad, very bad. And I start to laugh, and you could see the camera start to jiggle. It was like having Henny Youngman coach a team to the Super Bowl. The film itself, to this day, is still the most popular Super Bowl film that we've ever made, and Come it's on, all buddy. because of Hank Strand. Pump it in there, baby. Just keep matriculating the ball down the field, boys. 